Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of building this Quonset hunt for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, if you remember last time, we'll just get started here because last video was extremely long. Um, last time we worked on our, our door shed. We still have a few things to do with it, but we'll come back to that. Uh, we got some windows to make on the doors and and maybe open the doors a little bit here and there. But uh, we'll come back to this. The next part that we're going to be working on is the main part of the hangar over here, the Quonset part of the hangar. And what we're going to do is what you're going to do today is we're going to make the the walls of the Quonset and the and the roof and the part that comes over the office and maybe this wall of the office here actually not maybe we will make this wall of the office because we need it for certain things so we'll get as much done on part two as we can so we need to take a uh, few measurements and uh, translate those so we can go back into Blender and model this portion of the hangar. All right. So really what we need right off the bat is the length of this portion. Okay, from here down to this corner here. So let's uh, make sure that our path tool in uh, Google Earth is selected and click a starting point now you won't see the starting point because it's underneath the building uh, and then come over here to this corner and click there you can see the yellow line goes kind of through the office and um, but uh, that's nothing to be concerned about because our starting point is actually there you see it shows up right there it's underneath the building which is kind of cool but it's also kind of annoying all right so we measured and we're getting 140.96 uh, i can see that i overshot the corner a little bit and i'm pretty sure that's 140 feet okay so <clears throat> we know the length of the building uh, we can calculate the width, and I'll show you that here pretty quick. We don't need to measure it. We can get it off of our uh, door shed. All right, so we got 140 feet for the length of our main part of our building. Okay, now we're going to leave the origin right where it is, and we are going to add a... Um, second part but first what I want to show you um, I always digress um, I'm getting ready to make a new part and I'm gonna create a new selection not a new selection a new collection in blender and I am going to copy I'm gonna move all of the door shed parts to that new collection all right, so in Blender, go up to Screen Collection and right-click, click New Selection, and your new selection will be down here. It'll say Collection 2 or whatever uh, collection that you've created. So we're going to double-click that, and we're going to call that the Door Shed. Okay, is that right? No, that's learn how to type here there. there we go door shed all right so we've got a new collection called door shed and I'm gonna come up here and anything that I have hidden I have to unhide all right and then I'm gonna click on the top part and I'm gonna hold shift and click the bottom part so all my parts are selected and I'm gonna hit M and I'm going to copy those to door shed. See where door shed shows up? Select that. And now all those parts get copied to the door shed collection. Okay. And again, I realized I don't have my screencast on. 
So I'll turn that on for you. Okay, so now the door shed is in its own collection. So if I, I can move that, see how that kind of nests those all together. And you can turn them all off at the same time by just turning off that one collection. Okay, but you can still individually turn things off here. So we're going to turn our floor off and our scrap off that we had off before. Okay, so a little bit of setup there. Sorry. So while we're at it, um, let's go ahead and create a new, uh, new collection. So go to screen collection, right click, new collection come down here see it says collection three because it's the third one um, let's go ahead and rename that and let's uh, call this Quonset 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 okay so now we're going to be working in our Quonset collection and so any new parts that we add we'll add to that particular collection Make sense? Okay. All right. So we're leaving our origin right where it is for now. And we're going to add a new part. And that is basically going to be a rectangle or a square or a cube, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to shift A and we're going to add a mesh cube. Okay. And it, see, notice that the new cube is, since we had our Quonset, uh, collection selected the new part gets added in there all right now we want to add some dimensions now you got to remember that when you add a new part um, such as a, a three-dimensional mass the origin is in the center of mass so by default when you add a cube it's always a two by two by two if you're doing when you know whatever units you're messing with okay so I have a two foot by two foot by two foot cube but the origin is in the center of the mass so we need to bring that up uh, one foot so G Z one and that brings the bottom up to the ground level see how that works there all right now what we're going to do is we're going to move that out so we can see it a little better because it's inside our door shed so we're going to uh, uh, G Y and we're going to just going to slide that out so we can see it okay now we know our length is that hundred and uh, along the Y axis is 140 feet so we're going to go in and we are basically, you can actually type in the dimension here. So we're going to say 140 feet. Okay, notice that it goes into our door shed, but I'm not worried about that right now. Now we need to get our, we need to get our width. Okay, and the width of the Quonset is actually from this corner of the door shed to this corner of our person door that we created. How do I know that? Well, let's look at our drawing and I'll show you. I mean, not our drawing, our, our photo. Okay, in Google Earth. If you notice the curve of the roof, it ends at this wall. Yes, it continues past this uh, east wall here. Okay, but if we look at the other constant, a basic constant, you know the curved roof ends at each of the load bearing walls and the load bearing wall is the end of the of the curve all right usually your gable ends are not a load bearing wall that's where doors and stuff is the weight of the roof is being carried to your straight walls on either end okay and our complex quonset isn't any different it's just that they extended the roof past that load bearing wall so you have a load bearing wall here and one here okay and if you look at the shape we know that remember when we built this we had an, a foot and a half 
over here from this end of the wall over here to create our bump wall okay if you notice we from where the door is the hanger door to the person door we measured in it was also a foot and a half so this line extended out is most likely that outside of the load bearing wall does that make sense okay i used to do construction so it's uh some of this stuff is easy for me to remember um, so anyway the width of our quonset is going to be from this point uh, let me get path on here even though i'm not going to use the measurement we're going to calculate it all right so it's going to be from this let me clear that it's going to be from this corner right here to right at the corner of our person door just like that so it's the width of the door itself plus another three feet you got a foot and a half on this side and a foot and a half on this side all right but let's calculate it off of our drawing okay now we know that the whole length of our shed door was 144 feet right from this point to this point okay but if we want from this point to this point we can measure okay because our quonset comes up whoops our quonset comes up from this line to this line all right now we can use blender to measure so let's turn on our snap tool and make sure that we're on vertex select active okay make sure the magnet is on and then use the measure tool down here and you notice that it will snap to any vertice okay so we're going to come to this corner hold down the left mouse button drag it over until we snap at that corner right there and we get 123 feet okay so the width of our quonset is 123 feet all right so let's uh now to get rid of the measurements just after you've added a measurement just hover over it and hit the delete key and that measurement will go away and then make sure that you get your select tool back okay and then select our uh cube that we're working on and change the x to 123 okay so now now we're overshooting we're overshooting because we're centered on the entire door shed but we'll take care of that in a second okay so we have 123 feet now let's get the height let's go back to google earth get over to an area that we can see and let's find out what the height of this corner is all right sometimes these artifacts in the image can throw off your measurements just understand that okay so let's clear that and go to 3d path click the bottom of the wall as close as you can and then click the top of the wall as close as you can so we're looking at 21 feet um, I'm not sure it's going to be 21 feet. I'm thinking it's probably going to be something different. And if you want to, um, usually when I do a measurement, I'll do it like three times and then kind of get an average of it. So let's clear that and let's do another remeasure. Let's click this bottom and then come up to here and see what we get okay 20 21 and a half probably let's do a, one more measurement just for our own sanity come down here click there click there uh we're getting to that one is uh 21 20.9 20 so i'm gonna say 21 feet is probably good okay uh if you had engineering drawings you can get it perfect okay so let's make the height of this wall 
um, the load bearing walls let's make that 21 feet so let's go back to blender and change our Z no let's not do it here because if we do it here it automatically puts that mat that origin point in the center of mass let's go into edit mode by hitting tab whoops there we go hit tab what am I doing oh there we go I was I wasn't even clicked in the drawing area all right so now we're tabbed we're in edit mode for the cube turn on vertices and well let's get out of edit mode for a second sorry this is how I think get out of edit mode go to our object object and apply all transformations that way our vertices are going to be uh, they're going to record at the elevation that they actually are okay all right so go back into edit mode and let's select only the top vertices of our quantum okay so I have those selected and those are all at two feet elevation and we want to change those to 21 feet all right so with those selected type in 21 and that moves the top of the wall up 21 feet <clears throat> okay and now let's see how that compares to our prototype image so that wall top of the wall is about here okay and let's look here so yeah that looks pretty good that looks pretty good now this wall this is the west wall this wall is even with this wall of our door shed so we're going to move this entire block so it's even with this point right here okay so make sure your snap tool is on and let's go to x-ray mode and select all of our vertices for our block okay now if you notice in the snap tool I have active selected all right and we want to move our object based off of our active vertice and if you look at all of our selected vertices this white vertice is the active vertice we want we don't want the top one to be active we want this bottom one to be active so with the shift key held down click on the one that you want it's going to unselect it and then select it again and it now makes that one the active vertice so now when you move this object it's going to snap according to this vertice since we have snap vertice active okay now what we're going to do is we're going to hit g to move and see it will snap to any vertice that I come in contact with but we want this one right down here in this corner see how that snaps to it and then click okay now let's turn x-ray off and see how well that worked and that did just fine just like that so if we turn our angle this way and compare that with our prototype image and we are pretty good okay so there's our prototype there's the load bearing wall there and there's the load bearing wall going that way compare it with our blender file looks pretty good okay let's do a little bit of cleanup here all right so let's rename our cube to Quonset. wants it okay and let's select the ceiling and that's going to be scrap we're not going to use this because they have uh, beams and stuff going across okay so let's let's do a P new selection and let's call this uh, 
Quonset scrap. Okay. And then let's turn that off because we don't need it. And you got the floor. So let's select the floor and copy that to its own selection by P selection and call that floor. And let's turn that off. Okay. So we don't need those right now. Okay. And this wall right here that is common with the door shed, that's actually going to go away. All right. We're not going to have this wall. We're going to do something else here. So let's select this and let's copy that to its own selection. And let's call that scrap two. I don't want to delete it completely because I may need it. I don't know. So we'll call it scrap and then turn it off. Okay. So at this point, it'd be a good idea to do a file save. All right. So we have the basic building blocks of our Quonset. Now what we need to do in order for us to start the process of making our curved roof, if you notice on our prototype in our image, let's come over here to this view. I think that's, I think that's, uh, yeah, it's almost the same view that we have in Blender. All right. Notice that the cur curved roof goes past this load bearing wall and comes all the way down on our office. Okay. So in order for us to start building the curved part of the roof, we need this office wall right here, which is flush with this wall here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy part of the door shed and we're going to use that line and draw that out. Okay. So let me set up my prototype a little bit, kind of get that over here and let's do a measurement. Let's do path and let's go down to this corner. There's actually a little bit of recess here, but we won't worry about that right now. We'll take care of that later. Click there and then click to where this downspout is. It's going to be about 120, I think. Yeah, 120. Okay, so it's going to be 120 feet. But I'm going to do something a little different, but you're going to see why here in a second. Okay, so let's go back into Blender. And we want to select, let's get out of edit mode. Let's select our door shed and go into edit mode. And I want, let's turn edge select on and select this edge. All right, and what I want to do is I want to control D to copy it, hit escape so I don't move it, hit P so I can make a new selection. Okay, now you notice we didn't get a new part over here. Well, the reason we don't have a new part in our Quonset collection is because I selected something out of the door shed. And if you look inside your door shed, there's our new selection that we created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to office. Uh, how many F's do I have? Office wall. Okay. I'm going to make sure my off, make sure my out of, out of edit mode now, select my office wall, hit M and move that to our Quonset selection. So now office wall is in Quonset. Okay, does that make sense? Everybody see that? Now, even though we measured that office wall to be 120 feet, I'm gonna extend this wall 
to be even with the wall of our Quonset. And there's a reason why I'm doing that, and I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so with our office wall selected, go into edit mode. Oh, there it is. Go into edit mode, and edge select is on, so make sure that's selected. And we are, and make sure that you have snap and change that to edge. Okay. And with our office wall selected, hit E for, ex for extrude, Y for the Y axis, and drag that and park your cursor right on this edge right here. It will snap to that distance, not to that actual edge because we we did e y we we extruded it in the y so it's going to go in a straight line so select that edge click and it extends the length of this equal to the length of this all right does that make sense okay okay now we're setting up to start the construction of our our roof curve and we need a couple pieces. Uh, we need a couple things in order to do that. We need to put a loop cut in our office wall, and we need to put a loop cut in our Quonset, okay? Main part of the hanger, all right? So with, since we're still in edit mode for the office wall, do a control R. Oh, every time I move my mouse, I, I don't have Blender active. All right, so with our office wall, control R for a loop cut, but don't move it, just hit enter and escape. So it puts a loop cut right down the middle, okay? Now, get out of edit mode, select the Quonset, go into edit mode by hitting tab, and do control R, and put a loop cut there. Don't move it, hit enter, escape and then come on to the other wall over here and do a control R loop cut don't move it enter escape so you have three loop cuts now in this office wall and in the Quonset and they are they're all equal straight across okay the reason we made the loop cuts is because we're going to use those uh, edges we're going to select the edges and use them as construction lines, okay? And you'll see that coming up here in a second. Okay, then we want to get out of edit mode. Okay, by hitting tab and go to object, apply all transformations, okay? That way we get everything scaled and we get all of our vertices registered to the elevation or height that they really are in relationship to the origin. Okay, now um, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to get some measurements ahead of time um, so the video doesn't drag on while I'm doing a bunch of calculations. Be right back. Okay, I got a few measurements, but uh, there's a couple things we need to do, and then I'm going to show you how I got those measurements. Okay, but anyway, let's go back to the office wall, select that, hit tab, go into edit mode. Okay, now this wall that we copied this vertice from that we created the wall out of is only seven feet high because it was part of a loop cut that we made to make the height of this door. Okay, but if we go to our prototype and turn on 3D path, and here's the person door on that office wall, and that's seven feet high. But the top of the wall is a few, is a few feet taller than that. So what we want to do is measure, click there, the top of the wall here. Okay, and we're getting 9.69, okay? 
but we're not going to do 0 0.69 but I'm going to get another measurement see how so it's going to be nine feet okay because that first time I measured I got part of the fascia so we're going to make this wall nine feet tall okay so let's go back into blender and with our office wall selected in edit mode and our mode is vertice right up here select these vertices that only the top vertices and notice that the elevations at seven let's change that to nine so it makes our wall a little taller okay so we should have enough information to start constructing our curve okay for our roof okay now I'm gonna bring up a graphic that I made in Krita to show you the formula that we're gonna to use to create the curve of our roof okay so let me bring this up drag that over so the constant we are finding the radius of a curve based on knowing the chord of the curve and the height of the curve if you look at the graphic here's the curve of our constant hut right here where the end of the where that end of the curve is on each end would be the load bearing wall of a standard constant okay so this would be a load bearing wall and this would be a load bearing wall however we have a complex constant one wall it's on the bearing wall and the other wall is like over here okay because of the office space all right now we can play a little bit and assume that the constant if you look at it if we look at the shape of the constant notice that the curve if you if you want to build the curve it needs to be symmetric from the middle okay and if you look at the curve notice that the curve continues down to the office wall okay if you pretend that it extends on the other side the same distance okay you can get an accurate depiction of what this curve is so if we go back to our drawing here we can pretend that our load bearing wall is here and a load bearing wall is here and all we need to do is add two lengths to the end of the office wall and the end of the the missing office wall on the opposite side to make our curve our formula look like this so what am I saying well the chord of our curve is the top of our office wall okay technically all right so if we go back into blender and hit tilde a to get a back view all right if we extend this line out all the way across add another office on the other side okay that curve would go to this end of this pretend office line curve up like this and end at this office wall that really exists you with me so far I know it's confusing but you'll see how it works so to get the length of our chord which is line C B in our in our drawing we need to add the office distance on the other side okay so we know from this point to this point we know that that's 144 feet right because that's the length of our door shed and that office wall is flush with this wall okay so we know we have 144 feet so far but now we need to add the distance from this point to this wall on the other side okay 
And that is, if we kind of use our mouse, swing around, we know that that distance is from this point on our person door to this wall, okay? So when we built our shed, we know that from this point to the hangar door was 22 and a half feet, right? And we know that this little wall right here was a foot and a half. So from here to here is 22 and a half feet minus this one and a half. So that gives us 21 feet. So what we need to do is add for our cord length. I'm going to tilde A to get a back view. To get our cord length, we're going to go 144 feet to this wall and add another 21 feet to the length of our cord, which gives us what? 165? Yeah. Okay. So looking at our formula, CB is 165. But in our formula, we only need half of that. So we need to find out what half of 165 is. So half of 165 is 82 and a half. All right. So you can plug in right here. So radius is going to equal 82.5 squared plus h. Now we need to find this distance, h. Okay, how we do that is pretty darn simple. So let's go back into Blender and see if we can find that distance. That distance is going to be from where this vertice is up to where this vertice at the top of our roof, not the top of our roof, but the top of the fascia, okay? Because that curve comes up and touches this point and then comes down like this, all right? So we need to find out what elevation that point is. We know that this point right here, this vertice, we know that that's nine feet because that's how tall that wall is. So if you look right here and then up here in the Z, you know that that's nine. So we know that the elevation of this point is nine feet. Now, how do we find this one? Well, let's get out of edit mode from our office wall. Okay, and select our fascia. Okay, we can even zoom in if you want. Use your scroll wheel. Go into edit mode. Make sure that vertice is selected, vertice mode is selected, and select that vertice right there. And you'll notice it's at 34 feet. So the height difference between the office wall and the bottom of our roof is easily calculated by 34 minus 9. And that's going to give us 25 feet. So going back to our formula, we have all the information that we need now. So we know that R radius is equal to the 82.5 squared plus 25 squared divided by 2 times 25. All right, so let's plug that all into our calculator to find out what the radius of this curve is. So doing our math, I got to look because I wrote it all down. So radius is going to equal uh, 82.5 squared, which is actually 6,806 and a quarter feet plus the height squared, which is 25 squared, which is 625. So we're going to add the 6806.25 and the 625. That gives us 7431.25. And we're going to divide that by 2 times 25, which is 50. And we get a radius of 148. 0.625 feet. 
So knowing that now, we can build our arc. So let's go back into Blender, zoom out here, and leave that origin right where it is, right smack in the center. Get out of edit mode. All right. And now we're going to create our roof curve. Before we do that, let's come up to our collections and right click scene collection, new collection and make collection four, which it shows up here. And we'll call this roof. Okay. Now let's start building our curve. Okay. Let's make our roof collection active and let's go ahead and just leave our view kind of like this for now. All right. And let's do a shift A to add a new mesh and we're going to add a circle. Okay. By default, it's going to put a two foot by two foot circle, but don't click anywhere. Come down here to add circle and let's increase the number of vertices to uh, 128 or or more or less it depends on how much how smooth you want your curve so let's just call it 128 for now and in the radius box we have our radius that we calculated from our formula and that is 148 point whoops point six two five whoops that didn't work okay one forty eight point six two five okay that's our radius hit enter and it makes a big old circle okay now you can click outside and now we need to rotate our circle so let's select our circle and rotate on the x axis that's R X 90. Okay. So now our circle is standing up. All right. Now, next, we need to match the curve to our building. All right. So let's change our view to a straight on. So let's do the tilde A. Uh, let's try again tilde A to get a straight on shot of the back of our building. Okay. And we are going to go into uh, edit mode. Maybe. Do I want to go to edit mode yet? Uh, no. Let's not go into edit mode yet. Let's zoom into our building. You can stay out of edit mode for now. Our circle is still selected, so we're good. Okay. Now, the top of our circle comes up to about right here. All right. So we're going to drop our circle down until the top of our curve is close to this point right here. So with our circle selected, which it is right over here, do a GZ and just move that circle down just like this. Okay, now I need to show you something. All right, so I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna turn on lines so we can see our lines. Maybe I don't, no, yeah, there we go not I don't want x-ray mode if you notice that our our curve over here is way below our wall and there's a reason for that our our uh, origin of our curve is oriented right here 
at our uh, origin of our drawing. But the center of our curve needs to be at the center of the apex of our roof. Okay, so I'm going to control Z to undo uh, the move that we did. Okay, and there's a reason for that because I want to make sure that the origin of our circle is actually straight underneath the apex of our roof. So what we need to do is we need to take our 3D cursor and we need to move our 3D cursor to this point right up here. Okay, how do we do that? Well, it's relatively simple. All right, so what we're gonna do is select our roof fascia. Okay, let's see if that come over here, table contents at period. Okay, I'm, I have my roof shed ceiling selected, but I want fascia selected. Okay, go into edit mode, zoom in, and with vertices select, okay, if I don't have anything selected, I select that vertice right there, okay? And then I uh, hit Shift S and move my cursor to selected, and it moves my 3D cursor up to that point, okay? Then get out of edit mode leaving the 3D cursor there. Click on the circle and we're going to move the circle's origin from here to here. Okay, we're actually going to move the circle itself from this origin up to this origin. And how you do that is you're going to shift S and move selection to cursor. See how that moves our circle? Now, the center of our curve is equal to the center line of our Quonset hut. So let's do tilde A to get a view now, okay? So now you see that it's centered over here rather than over here now, all right? Now we can take our curve with our circle selected G, Z, and move that down. And what I want to do first is I want to turn off my snapping, okay? And let's zoom in a little bit more. And let's G, Z, and move that down until that curve is about right there. Okay. Okay, we need to do some adjustment because some of our measurements weren't perfect and they, they won't be unless you have the actual engineered drawings. But for Flight Simulator, we can make some little adjustments, okay? So what we're going to do is let's move our circle down a little bit. So GZ, move that circle until... Um, our circle is just below the fascia over here, just like this, okay? Now you notice it cuts through our two load-bearing walls, okay? And if we come over to our office wall, it kind of cuts through our office wall a little bit, okay? But that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, all right? All we need to do is make slight adjustments to our three load-bearing walls, okay? To bring those below that line, okay? I mean, the measurements are pretty close, but you're getting them off Google Earth, so sometimes things are a little goofy, so just make adjustments to make it work, because when you get it into the simulator, it's gonna look just fine, all right? So with our circle kind of like this, all right, we're gonna take our walls and make some adjustments. So let's get out of edit mode. I'm not in edit mode. Let's select our office wall 
go into edit mode, hit tab, and select these top vertices. And let me select this vertice here, hit I to zoom into that point. Zoom, use my scroll mouse to zoom out a little bit. Okay. Okay, yeah, all right. Select this vertice, this vertice, and this vertice. Okay, that one's already selected. And let's GZ and drop those down until they're just below the roof line, just like that. Okay, and hit tab to get out of edit mode and select our quantsant hit tab go into edit mode and select the top vertices okay just like we did with our office wall and come into this corner here hit g z and let's just drop those down just below the roof just like that Okay, and then tilde A to go to that back view. And our curve kind of looks like this. Okay, so it's pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Next, we need to move things a little bit. And now you're going to see why I did those loop cuts on these load bearing walls here in a second. Okay, so what we want to do is take our circle and move it so it's even with these vertices right here. Okay, so let's get out of edit mode from our quantsant, select our circle. Okay, and what we want to do is make sure that snapping is on and you want vertices select, I mean vertice active and turn on the magnet okay with the circle selected hit G Y to move it in the Y direction and move it to the Y direction until you snap on this uh, vertice from that loop cut that we made okay so now that lines our circle up where we made those loop cuts okay now the next step these these lines right here that are these edges that we created from our loop cut we need to create copies of those because we're going to use those for construction lines and here is how you do that so let's select our quantsant and go into edit mode by hitting tab make sure that edge select is turned on up here in the upper left hand corner select this edge and holding down your shift key hold that edge all right and what i want you to do is shift d to make a copy escape so you don't move them and hit p to create a new selection so in our quantsant collection we have a quantsant 001 those are those two lines that we just copied okay hit tab get out of edit mode select those two edges uh, that we created hit M to move those to the roof uh, collection okay so now quantsant 001 is in our roof collection okay now select the office wall tab go into edit mode make sure your edge select select that edge that we created with our loop cut and shift D to make a copy escape so you don't move it P to a new selection and that is in the quantsant uh, collection now under office wall 001 okay get out of edit mode select office wall 001 hit M move that to our roof uh, collection okay so the lines that we need are now in our roof collection now we're going to add these lines these two 
these three edges that we have and we're going to join those with the circle that we created okay now what I like to do is I like to make backups of some of the parts just in case something goes wrong so I'm going to select the circle and I'm just going to simply do a shift D and escape and now I have a circle 001 and I'm going to rename that to uh, B U circle B U for circle backup and then I'm going to turn that off okay and I might as well do it to office wall and quantsant 001 but we're going to give these a different name office wall let's make that off call that office wall line okay and let's make this uh, called Quonsant line. Okay, and let's make a copy of Office Wall. Shift D, Escape. Okay, did that work? No, it didn't because my mouse wasn't over here. Okay, so with the Office Wall selected, Shift D, Escape. Now I have Office Wall 001. Let's turn that off. Well, well, first let's rename it to have a BU at the end. Okay, and then turn it off. And let's make a backup of our Quonset line by doing the same thing. Mouse over here, Shift D, Escape. I have Quonset line 001. Rename that to BU for backup. And let's turn that off. All right, so we have construction lines. Now, with all of our construction lines made, our backups are turned off, okay? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to join all of our construction lines with our circle. So select the Quonset line, hold your control key, office line, and circle. So circle is yellow, okay? You want the circle yellow. That's why we're doing it from bottom to top. And then once those are all selected, just like this, hit Control J, and that will join those together. Okay? Now if we go into edit mode and select all the edges by select edge select and hit A, all the lines are there. Okay? So we have all the construction lines that we need. Okay? For the next step, Let's get out of edit mode for a second. For the next step, you're going to make sure that you have an add-on for Blender uh, activated. That add-on is called Extra. So come up to File, I mean Edit, Preferences. And you'll get this dialog box. If you don't have it already enabled, under Add-ons, come over here to Find, type in Extra, <clears throat> and you're going to see Extra Objects for Curve and Mesh. Go ahead and turn the... I already have them activated, so I'm not going to activate them again because they're already activated. If the check mark is not checked, check both of those, and then you can close this out by hitting the X. So, check mark the extra objects and then close that window okay you'll know that that is working correctly when you hit shift a and under mesh you have single vertice okay so you need the extras add-on uh, or plug-in enabled so that's how you do that that's important for the next step. The next step is getting rid of most of the circle except for the curve that we need for our roof. All right. So let's go into the back mode by hitting the back view. All right. So let's talk about views real quick. All right. If I hit tilde T, I get a top view of our hanger okay and then if I scroll 
uh, scroll button you can see that the orientation of our building all right this is the front so this would be the front view this is the left view this is the right view and this is the back view and back is a okay since uh, uh, B is bottom okay and that's the bottom view all right so they use the a in the word back for the back view so if I did a tilde F takes us to the front view if I til tilde R takes us to the right view tilde L takes us to the left view and tilde A takes us to the back view okay you with me so far so we want the back view tilde A so here's our back view oops I moved it tilde A and ah, I did it again tilde A shift mouse button there we go and then zoom in all right now let's go into edit mode hit tab with the circle selected and you see here's the lines that we've copied over you can't see that one because it's interfering with the drawing which is fine and if I turn on vertices you're gonna see all the vertices of our circle plus the vertices for our lines that we brought over okay now what we want to do is we want to get rid of everything in our circle except all these right here from this point over to this point except if you notice I don't have a vertice right here in our circle and I don't have a vertice right here in our circle we need to add one of those and we're that's why we brought the construction lines in so we can tell blender to split that line where these two will intersect okay and that's what we're getting ready to do next now didn't really need to bring in this edge because we're not going to split that right here we're going to split it on the office wall okay um, but you're going to see why we need the plug-in and why we moved our circle to be even with these lines okay so in edit mode just mouse over or mouse mouse rotate okay get into a nice view and what I want you to do is make sure you're in edit uh, for vertice okay this tool up here and come over here to the right side to the merge the auto merge button and go to options and make sure that split edges and faces is check marked okay so you have the merge the auto merge button selected and you have split edges and faces uh, check marked all right now with edit with vertices uh, select mode select a vertice of one of these uh, vertical lines and G Z move that up just somewhere past the circle and click and it automatically puts a vertice at the intersection of those two lines okay then you can delete vertice and now you have just that right there okay now come over to the office wall on the other side and do the exact same thing and this is why we put the office wall below our roof line so it will create an intersection of those two so select the vertice GZ just move it up a little bit click and it adds a vertice right here and then you can delete this vertice that was added so delete vertice okay so now this line the circle that we created is now this this segment from here to here is now split so if you go to edge mode and select that notice that it stops at the wall see how that split that line okay now let's go back into back mode tilde a back view sorry and now we want to select our edges we can 
um, select this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, we can select all those with a box. Okay, pan over, select those, select that, and select that little one right there. Okay, and we want that's the part of the circle we want. Okay, now we need to get rid of everything other than what I have selected now. Okay, so how you do that, go to select, invert your selection, so it selects everything that you didn't have selected. Does that make sense? Okay, and then hit delete, and delete edges. So now, you only have the part of the circle that you're going to use for your roof. Now let's move some things into position so we can make that look more like a roof and not just a simple line, okay? Now, just like everything else that I do, I want to keep this. I want to make this arc. I want to make a copy of this arc all by itself so I can use that for an, um, something coming up in uh, a future video. So let's uh, get out of edit mode by hitting tab. Okay, let's change our circle name to call that uh, roof profile. Okay, hit enter. So now we have an arc that's a roof profile. And let's make a backup. So shift D, escape, so you don't move it. And now we have profile 001. Let's rename that. Put a BU at the end for backup. And hit enter. And go ahead and turn that off. That way we can come back and use it. Okay. Now, since all of this worked, you can go ahead and delete your other backups if you wanted to, okay? But I'm not going to. I'm going to keep them just in case I, uh, my brain didn't work and I need to recreate it, okay? All right, so with the roof profile selected, we want to move that to this, to this point right here at the end of our building, all right? So remember the active vertice okay remember our snap is set to active vertice so we want to make this point right here this vertice on the end active so go with the profile selected go into edit mode go into vertice select select all with a zoom in to this last vertice and select it well when you select it, it'll unselect it and then select it again so it, so it shows up white, okay? And then you're going to move this entire arc to this end of the building. So G, Y, and then just point at any, any vertice that's on that wall and, and uh, click your mouse. So that now snaps that arc to the end of the building, just like that, okay? The next step is to create, turn it into a face that goes all along the building. And what we're gonna do is with edge, with, uh, edge select, make sure that all of them are selected and you can uh, keep your snap to vertice selected if you want, okay? Or you can change that to edge. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to extrude these edges all the way down our building to be equal to this point right here, okay? So with all those edges selected, hit E, Y. And as you move your mouse, hover on this line right here, and you'll notice the roof stops right there, and click your mouse. 
now you have the curved roof. Okay. Now it's not perfect. It, uh, we're getting measurements off of Google Earth, so it's going to be as good as you get the measurements. Okay, and we did some rounding that may have affected some of the measurements, but that's okay. That's okay. You just want it to get close. The only way you're going to get it perfect is if you have the engineered drawings of the building. Okay, so don't worry about it unless you're a perfectionist and it really drives you crazy. Okay, now we have the basic shape of our roof done, and now we're going to give it some thickness. And then I'm going to go ahead and end this video here because this has been another long one. They'll get shorter as we go along, <laughs> I hope. Okay, but uh, we'll make uh, give this roof some thickness and then we'll end this video for this part. And then the next one will uh, make this even better. Okay, so anyway, let's make this roof have a little bit of thickness. All right, so let's get out of edit mode and let's do a save. Okay, so now we're good. All right, and we got roof profile here. Yep, okay. Now, let's turn on, let's go into object mode here, and let's turn on face orientation. And you'll notice that face orientation, red there. We got blue on top, which is good. All of our stuff is like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's go into, let's go ahead and turn off face orientation since we saw everything looked good. And let's select our roof. And with polygon, oh, go into edit mode by hitting tab. With polygon select mode on, hit A to select all of our polygons. Okay. And we want to extrude all of our polygons to be the thickness from this point to this point. Okay. So make sure that your snap vertice is turned on and let's zoom into this corner so we get a better view here let's go into line view there we go they'll show up better and then extrude Z to stop that. Uh, let me figure something out here for a second. I'm doing this live, so I got to figure out what I did wrong. I know what I did wrong. I just forgot something. Okay. When you have a bunch of planes, okay, each one of these segments is a plane. It's a flat plane, right? Okay. When you have a whole bunch of planes selected that are in different directions, and you want to extrude those, okay? If I had a simple plane and I wanted to extrude it, if I only had one plane and I want to extrude it, it's going to extrude it in the direction that the face of the plane is, okay? So it would extrude it at an angle like this, okay? Now, since you have a whole bunch of planes that are selected that are all different, Okay, they're all different planes. It's going to extrude those to the average direction. Okay, we don't want that. Okay, we want it to extrude in a particular direction. And in this case, we want to extrude the, all of these polygons in the Z direction, straight down. Okay, because this fascia isn't, isn't angled like this. It's straight down to the load-bearing wall, okay? So, with all of your polygons selected, <coughs> sorry, like I have it,
do an E. Notice, see the, see the angle of the blue line? It's kind of an angle, okay? If you do an Z, it, now it's straight up and down, okay? Then you can extrude that down to a point. Now, I'm going to extrude that in the negative 0.5. No, let's go backspace. Let's, uh, let me undo here. Let me escape, control Z. Okay, try this again. What is that distance? Let's, uh, we got snap on. Let's hit our distance tool and go from this vertice to this vertice. And that's not working right because it's going to the wrong place here. So, however that, like I said, I'm doing this live, so we're not going to... That point to that point. Now, where are you getting that? How come you won't do that? Okay. All right. What is that distance? How come it won't snap to my vertice? just wants to go let's go to some weird place and I don't want I want it right there what is that distance please hold while I figure this out okay I forgot that it's a little weird all right so I'm gonna I got uh, vertices showing up and I got my measuring tool got snapped to here so I'm gonna snap here move it down and of course I'm getting 111 feet but if I scroll here notice that it's snapping over to a point here and here's the point that we want to end it so to fine-tune that measurement grab that end with your mouse and move that up there and then come over to the other end of your measure tool grab it with the left mouse button and drag it over to that vertice. Now I have that measurement. And it says 0.966368, okay? And I could tell you right now, that's close enough for a foot for the extraction, uh, for the extrusion. So let's call it one foot for now. And we'll make adjustments later, all right? So I'm gonna delete that measurement, come up to my select tool, and I have all of my polygons selected. And I'm going to extrude Z straight down one foot minus minus one foot. And there we go. We got it. Okay. Now, if we come over to our wall, office wall, we're going to be a little bit below our office wall and probably too much below our office wall, okay? But we can make really fine adjustments to fix that problem. And we'll work on that stuff next time because I've kept you guys here long enough. So anyway, that is the complex process. Sorry complex process of making a curved roof um, like I said you can get as perfect as you want uh, for the flight simulator little little pieces that are off are good enough in my opinion I mean I like to get things perfect but I don't have engineering drawings anyway I hope that this video was useful in using some facets of the tools to do some some work next time we are going to make some fine adjustments to this office wall end here we'll cut out this little part let me get the drawing we will cut out this corner like this so it looks kind of like that we'll make the ends of our quonset and we'll cut in some windows and work on these hangar doors. Um, and we'll also do some 
maybe make some frames on the inside of the building so when the doors are open we can see the frame structure of the building all right i know this was another long video guys i know it was and i apologize uh but i like to be as detailed as possible hey thanks for watching uh please subscribe hit the notification notification bell and again i have a buy me a coffee count um Buy me at coffee.com slash my physical world. And we will see you guys on the next one. See you later.